Just as the, t as the team was boarding a plane to New York for a game against Syracuse, it was, it was announced excuse me, that Chris Jones had been suspended indefinitely. The next night, the Cards lost to the Orange, and Rick Pitino talked about how the team missed their senior guard. Well, we missed him a lot, but, you know, it's, it's his selfishness that hurt the team. See, I, I don't, I'm not one that believes in suspensions, game suspensions. I believe in, in punishment where you get up in the morning and you lift weights and you get curfew at night. And, but this was not a, a, a decision by me. So this was a decision that it's all cleared up. He could play the next game if he does what the assistant coaches tell him to do. If he doesn't, he sits again. And I don't care if he sits all season, to tell you the truth. I could care less. Because if he doesn't, not going to do the right things and act like a global man, he could move on and, and try, to, uh, try to go to um, Belgium somewhere. In the following days, Jones' suspension was lifted and he returned for UofL's game against Miami, scoring 17 points in that comeback win. After the game, Jones talked about the suspension and what it meant to him. It was very difficult, you know, especially when you know you could do something to help your team win in, in certain situations. You know, uh, I'm not going to say uh, Quinn did bad. He did a great job. You know? He uh, ran the team, did what he was supposed to do, but on the, on the other end of the court, you know, uh, that's where he struggles at, and he knows it, and that's why I try to get him better at, you know. But um, watching that game, it really, really hurt me, you know, uh, especially knowing that I, I made a mistake that I shouldn't have done. It is what it is. I learned from it. You know, uh, Coach called it my selfish behavior of what happened between the, the situation. So it's just something I learned from, you know, um, yeah, you got to stay away from things like that, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. The day after that game, Jones was abruptly dismissed from the team. Now, a police report revealed that Jones had sent a threatening text message to his on-again, off-again girlfriend, but there was also a separate investigation that had not yet come to light. The next day, the Cards won at Georgia Tech, and once again, Rick Pitino talked about Chris Jones. Regardless of if somebody does something wrong, I, I feel they're all my children. But he's no longer on the basketball team. So he's got to now talk for himself, no different than when Shane Bahannon left. And it's not up to me to comment about anything. He was dismissed from our team. He's not coming back. We wish him the best success in the game of life. But it, it's just, it is what it is. And, I, and I, I, nothing I can say can, can remedy the situation. And then finally, late last night, a warrant issued for Jones's arrest regarding the rape and sodomy charges we talked about earlier. Jones, booked on $25,000 bond, will go into house arrest following his initial release. Now, following Jones's arraignment today, the University of Louisville held a media briefing to address questions regarding the investigation that began on Sunday morning. Officers responded to reports that two women had been sexually assaulted at Cardinal Town Apartments. Campus police confirm one of those women is a student at UofL and the other is an online student at Western Kentucky. Dean of Students Dr. Michael Martis said that as of this morning, Jones remained enrolled at UofL. Martis and police confirmed that the threatening text from Chris Jones's phone was unrelated to the rape investigation. Martis was then asked to explain why Jones was allowed to remain on campus after the text was sent. The university has protocols in place that if we believe somebody is an immediate threat of harm to others, we can take interim administrative action. And again, there's a lot of different factors that go into that decision in a particular situation. Again, I can't get into the details because of federal student privacy laws about a specific case, but we do have the ability to remove somebody from campus um, immediately if we feel that is necessary. So you didn't think he was an, an immediate threat? We can obviously extrapolate that after the text messages, you guys did not think he was an immediate threat to anybody? He was not removed from campus.